This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. So good afternoon. Um, I know quite many people on the screen. So um, uh, I'm Gilles Bransbourg. I was the executive director here until a few weeks ago. I'm on leave um, at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, but I guess most of you knew it. But that's not the topic today. Um, it's going to be my pleasure to introduce uh, Dominique Anterion from the Monet Paris. So first of all, I'd like to say a few words about the Monet Paris. I've, I've been to this place four or five times over the past five, six years. It's an extraordinary um, and very unique institution. First of all, one of the oldest corporations in Europe. It was incorporated in 864. Uh, under Charles the, the Bold, one of the Carolingian kings. And um, it's um, at some point there were many means operating across the kingdom of France and many uh, feudal lords and uh, uh, ecclesiastical lords had minting powers. But finally, with um, the centralization of France under the monarchy and then the Republic, the Monet Paris has become the last active um, mint so it's more than 1200 years of uh, continuous um, minting activity, which is a very, very unique case in, um, in, in Europe. Um, I'd like to say as well that the Monet Paris, has, uh, they produce extraordinary uh, coins and medals, uh, mixing history with, uh, you know, for example, they, they resurrected lately the Louis XIII Louis d'Or, uh, on the on the new series, but at the same time, there's a lot of innovation happening at Monet Paris in shape and form or topics. There's a series on Hello Kitty that I will offer to my elder daughter for her, for her birthday. She was a fan of Hello Kitty. Uh, they have been doing uh, you know Disney series or with other comics of the Olympic Games um and so forth so it's a very innovative mint with a lot of extremely appealing uh, product I, I i find so now a few words about dominique so dominique anteron who is our speaker today is the chief curator and in charge of the collect the numismatic collections uh, and you know technical scientific and numismatic collections at monet paris and he's has, he has had this position since 2015. He's a, he has a diploma from École du Louvre and from the École des Hautes Études Sciences Sociales in Paris. And he notably worked on the jeton uh, during the Ancien Regime, so 17th, 18th century in France. Uh, at the same time, he has been the curator for many exhibitions at the Monet de Paris including um, World War I, The Money and the Third Front uh, from 2018. Uh, and more recently, he has been, um, uh, well, which was timely because of, of the Olympic Games in Paris. There was an exhibition on Dor d'Argent de Bronze, so gold, silver, and bronze, an history of the Olympic medal. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Dominique, you, you've got the floor, so it's um, you to speak. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. I uh, screen, I search my screen. Okay, uh, two. Is it good for you? No, pas encore, no. no. Ah, okay, partager. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, I thank the American Numismatic Society for inviting me to present my paper today. And uh, also, I want to apologize for my very bad English. And uh, I thank uh, Gilles Brandbourg if maybe translate your question eventually at the end of the paper. And thanks uh, to thanks to Gilles for this invitation. Uh, it's uh, it's a pleasure to to speak to you today. Um, the, the conference today is uh, the first in a series of three. Today, I will talk to you about the Monet de Paris in general. And um, I, uh, uh, the question, what is the Monet de Paris, uh, both in its uh, institutional 
industrial and uh, heritage uh, dimension. Um, I will come back the next time in more detail to the subject of the heritage fund and in particular monetary. And in the third intervention, I will speak about the more uh, artistic part, uh, art object and, uh, and medal. Uh, I would the next. Uh, alors, vous êtes en train de partager, oui, bah oui. Ah, OK, it's good. Uh, let me introduce uh, myself briefly. Huh? I have worked at the Paris uh, Mint for uh, 35 years. Uh, I have arrived at the establishment as a guide in the new museum, um, Mint, founded in the 1987 by uh, Jean Belobre. You can see here the museum of the Jean Belobre and Bruno Collin. It do not exist uh, today. So I led a lot of group and uh, I, did, uh, I have a, a photo of Jean Belobre uh, dead in 2020. Uh, it's a, 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 great, a great man and a great numismatic uh, specialist uh, of, about uh, the um, uh, medium fall uh, coinage in particular. Um, so I led a lot of group in the museum, uh, adult and scholar, and this public dimension is very important and you will understand why uh, later. But uh, I, I don't forget uh, my first job in the Paris Mint, my job of guide. It's a part very important of my uh, conception of a museum. Uh, the job of guide is a random job and uh, we are not always uh, in activity, of course, and uh, we have a quiet time. And uh, in quiet time, um, Jean-Luc Denier, the last uh, collection correct, uh, curator after the departure of Jean Belobre, uh, entrusted me uh, with a lot of mission and in particular on the inventory of the collection. Uh, inventory of the medal, for example, or for the token, and uh, it uh, it will be very important for me and for my studies, and also on the assistance of the in, in the preparation of the exhibition, uh, and um, in 1996 the exhibition about the last acquisition of the Paris Mint. It's a, an example of this uh, of my work on this exhibition. I succeeded uh, to Jean-Luc Denier after his uh, retirement in the, um, uh, 2015. And uh, today, uh, I am in charge of the collection of the Monet de Paris, as say uh, uh, Gilles, uh, in particular, the monetary collection, the technical and the scientific collection. Also, uh, between uh, 2012 and 2017, I have worked on the script and the design of the new uh, Musée de la Monnaie de Paris, the current museum. You can see here the picture of the first day of the inauguration of the new museum in, uh, 20, in the 2017 inaugurated by Bruno Le Maire, the French Ministry of Finance. Uh, and I have worked on a um, most numerous room in the museum, in part on, about the monetary hapsec, um, subject. So what is the Paris Mint? Uh, I, I have a, perhaps a photo of the museum. Yes, voila, it's a photo of the new Museum, the current museum you can see today if you go in Paris. So, what is the uh, Monet de Paris? What is the Paris Mint? To make it short, I would say that the Monet de Paris uh, is, in fact, the major of two entities. Uh, on the one hand, the Monet des Espèces, that to say the monetary workshop of Paris. Uh, workshop about one of the most famous written mansion is that of the Hedy de Pitre of um, uh, 864, as I say, uh, Gilles, uh, um, uh, um, and this date 
is today retained it by the Monet de Paris at its date of creation of foundation, well, which does not really make sense. But companies often need a symbolic uh, starting point, and it, it's uh, it's uh, this one for the Paris Mint. Okay. Um, also, please note that in um, uh, 2025, the uh, next year, we will celebrate the uh, 2015 years anniversary of the installation of the Paris Mint workshop in the Hotel de la Monnaie. Uh, you can see uh, on this slide, uh, you can see the map of um, the Hotel de la Monnaie, wanted by Louis XV, the King of France, and designed by Jacques Denis Antoine, the architect, a workshop which opened in um, 1775. And you can see on the right a sculpture of the Fortune. It's um, a masterpiece in the Great Monnaies, uh, the all where uh, coin were, were struck in the Hotel de la Monnaie. The Paris Mint is also the heir to the Monnaie des Médailles. We have the Monnaie des Espèces and we have Monnaie des Médailles. The Monnaie des Médailles was the institution responsible for striking medal and token initially installed in the Louvre Palace. Uh, and uh, which would merge with the Monet des Espèces in Conti building at the beginning of the 19th century. The Paris Mint is the result of the fusion of the Monet des Médailles and the Monet des Espèces. More, more or less, at the same time, was created the first currency museum. Um, First Currency Museum, uh, the slide. Yes, and you can see the actual entrance of the old First Museum. Uh, today, it's a great salon uh, in the Hotel de la Monnaie, and you can see the inscription, Musée Monétaire. And uh, on the right, it's uh, all the photography at the beginning of the 20th century of the museum. And you can see the old showcase of the Louis Philippe period, because it's Louis Philippe and uh, Dominique Vivant de Nom uh, who created uh, this first currency museum. Uh, this museum has um, the, had the vocation of a professional conservatory of all artifacts. Uh, link it to the world of engraving and uh, minting. It was a museum very different as the museum of today for all the public. Um, the 19th century was, of course, a very uh, rich period for the Paris Mint, uh, with, uh, uh, in particular, the gradual transition from the screw press press striking to the mechan mechanical press striking. And it was also a period very rich during the Paris Mint Laboratory, becoming a national and international reference. Uh, you have here a very rare photography of this old laboratory, uh, a national and international reference on the subject of metal and in particular monetary metal, uh, which can truly be considered as a fundamental research laboratory and the work uh, carried out by Gay-Lussac in this laboratory being the most famous. And you can see, uh, you can see here um, the, the page, uh, the home page of the book of Gay-Lussac instruction about uh, the uh, raw material in the silver uh, by Gelisac uh, for the Paris Mint and a, a lot of engraver for of the material necessary to this um, uh, chemistry. Um, it's, a, it's a document in the archive of Paris Mint. Um, another area of 
development for the Paris Mint in the 19th century was the expo export. Um, the coin export with the start of um, numerous coin production for foreign countries and particularly uh, for South Africa, Central America and South America and part of Asia. Um, uh, the, and today, uh, the export for foreign countries is very important uh, in the um, budget of the Paris Mint. Uh, the Currency Museum become uh, de facto a showcase of the expertise of the Monet de Paris for institutional visitors about to order their currency from France. And with the gradual closure of all mint in France during the 19th century, and in particular, the closure of the last uh, provincial mint, uh, that of Bordeaux, uh, the Monet de Paris became the only French monetary institution at the end of the 19th century. As a logical consequence, in the 1899, the Paris Mint became a department of the Ministry of Finance, the Department of Coin and Medal, l'Administration des Monnaies et Médailles. And you can see here the very, very nice medal of Louis Botté, a great and French engraver, a medal for the Ministry of Finance. And you can see uh, on the obverse the very nice uh, figuration of the Paris Mint uh, and the uh, Tonnelier Press, one of the first mechanical press for the coinage. It's a, a, a medal I, I like a, a, a lot. Um, the, um, so the statue of the statue of um, the of Department of Coin and Medal uh, will kept uh, until um, uh, uh, two thousand and seven. And two thousand and seven, the Monet de Paris became a public industrial and commercial establishment. Uh, an epic in uh, acronym uh, in French acronym. Under French law, Monet de Paris became an emanation of the French state, but with its own legal personality and with a single shareholder, the French state. This change is very, very important. This change, this change in statute had a particular impact on the heritage of the mint, because the historic building of the Quai Conti and the museum collection remind the property of the state and are not longer part of the property of the Paris mint. It should be noted that the law governing the new statue of the Paris mint forces Paris mint to maintain, to enrich, and to exhibit the heritage entrusted by the state. And this without additional budget. This means that my salary, but also all the costs related to the maintenance, enrichment, exhibition of the collection are made, made where with the single budget of the Monet de Paris. Uh, this budget is therefore the result of a part of the sale that the Monet de Paris make with the coin and medal production, but also is very important by the profitability of the building which is rented, which is privatized on the occasion or even. Here, for example, on the next slide, a sense of open air cinema, and uh, you recognize perhaps uh, the diffusion of the um, film La Folie des Grandeurs by Gérard Houry, uh, a film that evokes the complicated relationship between power and money, a subject uh, uh, in relation with the Paris Mint and 
um, who, uh, who permit to open uh, the, the site of the uh, Hotel de la Monnaie for all the public. Uh, or um, possible, the rental by a company, and we have here uh, um, a picture with um, a rental by a company uh, of the newly restored Mansart Court. It's an occasion for me to present uh, the uh, last uh, zone in the Paris Mint uh, restored, uh, the and it's the oldest part of the Paris Mint because this uh, bâtiment is on the of the 18th, um, 17th century, and the Hotel de la Mer is of the 18th century. It's a uh, um, 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 uh, element important for the uh, finance uh, and the budget of the Paris Mint. I have omitted um, one step, uh, very important, uh, in the in this uh, story, brief brief story, um, the creation in the, uh, 1973 of a new production plant installed in Pessac, um, uh, near Bordeaux. Uh, Pessac, yes, and you can see the main room, uh, the main plant in the uh, um, plant installed in Pessac, near Bordeaux, at uh, uh, 500 kilometers from Paris. Um, it's in this factory that the coin uh, are struck both in uh, euros, for example. Uh, you can see here uh, raw material uh, to uh, make a blank. And you can see here uh, the die and the die for the two euro uh, coin and in particular the two euro of the children. Uh, commemorative piece, uh, coin of uh, the, the euro, uh, and here uh, two uh, version of uh, the, the euro uh, in a uh, belle épreuve quality. It's uh, the, the must on the uh, quality of uh, numismatic, of course. Uh, and of course, uh, it's in Pesach, we struck the money for foreign countries. And you can see here, uh, money for Bangladesh, uh, or uh, in the next photo, uh, the production for Costa Rica. Uh, it's very important to the money de Paris to diversify uh, this production and not only with the horror. Um, today, the historic building houses uh, the management, I have uh, other photo of the Hotel de la Monnaie. You can see here the main uh, square, uh, empty, uh, because it's possible to organize uh, privatization of the uh, court and the main court of annex court of the bâtiment. And uh, the historic building houses the management uh, all of the company's support function, and also uh, several workshops. Uh, the medal minting is made in Paris, the art foundry is made in Paris, and the engraving workshop is made in Paris. Uh, you can see here the traditional uh, um, table uh, for the engraver, um, for the tie direct, uh, and uh, uh, here we can see an engraver on the plaster for the medal to the for the Institut du Monde Arabe. It's a private uh, medal. Uh, you can see the engraver on the uh, on the plaster and the uh, reduction uh, on the tour à réduire. Uh, of the, the of, that, uh, of this uh, of this medal. Um, the tie direct here with Yves Sampo. Yves Sampo is the actual uh, chief, uh, engraver in chief. Uh, it's uh, um, one of the oldest engraver in uh, our uh, how and uh, our house. Um, and 
all the operations uh, are made under the direction of the general engraver, the graver general, who supervises all operation. Here we uh, see uh, Joaquin Jimenez uh, designed uh, on this picture uh, the French Excellence Coin uh, 2021 dedicated to the um, to the to the great uh, French Lux uh, House of Dior. Uh, it's a, a collection. It's a great collection uh, named Excellence à la Française. Uh, one coin each. Uh, year. Uh, Joaquin Jimenez. Uh, it was a, it was a winner of the Euro Concours uh, for the uh, one and two euros uh, coin. Uh, it is also in Paris that the gold collector are struck. Uh, and it's a very, very fine uh, work to made a collector coin. I have a photo um, about the, this fabrication. Oh, it's very sensible. Uh -huh. ah, with the caveat. Example of the um, gold uh, collection coin. And uh, uh, here you can see uh, for uh, 20, uh, 2023 and 2024, the coin from the collection Gold of France, or de France, uh, which commemorate the three great currencies of French history. Uh, the Louis d'Or of Louis XIII uh, on the right, and the gold front of Napoleon III. The design is inspired by the hold coin, and the design is made by Joaquin Jimenez. And the next of the series uh, will be the front à cheval of Jean Le Bon, the great medieval uh, gold coin, the first front of the of the history it's a very nice uh, collection um personally um i'm not a collector um, uh, it's not possible with my job uh, but uh, um, uh, if, if i can uh, sell this coin i why not and the the new Louis d'Or is, is very nice. It's a very great creation of uh, Jimenez, a mix of uh, G Joaquin Jimenez and Jean Varin. So it's, it's, it's a very nice binome of a creator. Uh, two other exceptional collection coin. Uh, my cursor is broken. Je, je, je suis, oh. No, je suis obligé d'y aller au clavier. Coco Chanel, a very nice coin designed by Karl Lagerfeld in the 2008. A very, very nice creation with the aspect of the Marie of Karl Lagerfeld and the very nice portrait of Coco. And uh, more previously, the ultimate from the Ultime France, the ultimate front, that is uh, to say the last coin struck in France by France uh, before the transition to the Euro. And this coin uh, was designed by the most famous French designer, Philippe Stark. It's a, a very nice creation and very, very difficult to, to strike of uh, this money in the gold and the silver version. This money is uh, exponed in the uh, current museum of the of the Monet Paris. More recently, and with a particular major courage, it was the Parisian workshop of the Monet de Paris that produced the uh, 2024 Olympic medal games. But before, I would like to present uh, other picture of the engraver workshop. It's always a pleasure to see uh, the gesture of the artist of the Monet de Paris here for the French collection with the uh, Semeuse 
reimplant the, the new version of the Semeuse de Oscar Rotti, the great creator of the Semeuse at the end of the 19th century. Here is the end, uh, you can see the end in the punson of uh, Yves Saint Po, uh, our uh, graver um, here. And uh, a very nice photography with, the, with this uh, motif on adhesive and uh, the uh, regular. Um, Aller-retour, je ne sais pas comment est-ce qu'on dit un aller-retour, en fait, entre le motif and the, and the graver. Um, the final die. And with this die, we can struck this coin in two versions, a version in monoblock, gold, uh, gold only, and this version with two gold, uh, it's a very important innovation, uh, gold, yellow, and in the center, an insert we, in blue gold. The blue gold is um, mixed uh, between yellow gold and iron, and the mixed uh, and the result is this uh, insert, uh, blue or roses. Uh, if we can, we if we uh, put uh, copper, uh, and it's the version, the monoblock version. Yes, the recently production of the artisanal workshop of the Hotel de la Monnaie in Paris are the medal for the Olympic and the Paralympic medals. Um, the challenge of this um, production was the insertion of a small piece of the Eiffel Tower with the problem which emerged from the association between iron and precious metal. It's very difficult to uh, made a correct negotiation uh, between the two the two metal uh, here it's a, uh, the middle uh, during the press presentation uh, before the Olympic Games and uh, uh, the, the pre pressure to uh, to present uh, the French uh, team uh, Olympic and Paralympic team with uh, the medal. Uh, with a blue ribbon for Olympic medal and a red ribbon for the Paralympic medal. And for all the medal, Olympic and Paralympic, the uh, piece of Tour Eiffel in the center of the medal. Uh, it was a very, very magnificent period. Uh, I have, uh, um, uh, I was in Paris during the Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. It was just fabulous. Also, production uh, of the Monde de Paris in the uh, Paris plant, uh, in the Hotel de la Monnaie, the official decoration, such as the Légion d'honneur. Uh, you can see here the Grand Croix of the Légion d'honneur. Uh, we have uh, also the National Order of Merit, the Palm Academic Palm, etc., etc. I remind you concerning medal and decoration, uh, there is no monopoly for Monet de Paris, unlike the currency, of course, huh? uh, exist other um, plant, uh, private plant uh, to produce this product, but the best medal are, of course, the medal of the Paris Mint. And you can see one of our graver and graver um, with a ribbon, a tricolor ribbon, uh, because a, a lot of engraver of the Paris Mint are a moth, moth, meilleur ouvrier de France, one of the best uh, engraver in the world, uh, Daniel Ferron uh, on the on the picture. It's a conservatory of um, technical and um, on the uh, tradition, traditional uh, gesture uh, is very important for the Paris Mint uh, to, cons to preserve object and the gesture of the artist. Um, 
because um, because of this long history and this uh, different activities, both uh, monetary and artistic, the Paris Mint now holds an extremely important heritage. We have a very important heritage. Uh, as I said earlier, this heritage uh, was exponent from the reign of uh, King Louis Philippe in the first Museum of Monet. Uh, the second museum uh, was that of uh, Jean Belobre that I was uh, talking about uh, earlier. And uh, the Museum of Jean Belobre, uh, my first museum when I was a student, uh, this museum closed again in 2020 under the mandate of the uh, president of the Paris Mint, Christophe Beau. But Christophe Beau want a, a, a new museum, and the museum reopened in uh, 2017. And you can see here the uh, current museum of the Monet de Paris, the actual museum of the Monet de Paris. It, it, it is the third museum on the Hotel de la Monet site. Obviously, um, uh, and as uh, with any museum, uh, our museum is only uh, the visible part of a very, very important collection uh, built along the, the history of the Monet de Paris. And today, uh, the permanent exhibition uh, present more uh, uh, 1,030 objects uh, that evocate a numismatic aspect in their generality, uh, currency, medal, a token, a technical history, function, and use of currency. It's a little, a little part of the retail of the Monet Paris, but it's not possible uh, to expose all the collection. Um, the collection um, presented in the museum are um, supplemented by um, a numerous a multimedia device, and you can see here uh, a device about the uh, striking of the of the middle. Uh, video, for example, it's uh, in this case, uh, or um, in form of game, and you can see uh, here uh, a game to uh, learn the collect the collection principle. Uh, it's a speed game to collect uh, for one uh, medal with uh, animals, for other medals with monument, etc. It, it's a, uh, an education, a ludic education about the medal or about the money. Each of these multimedia devices aims to provide additional information and for some of them, to resolve the problem of the size of the coin. It's always a problem in the museum, the little size of the coin. Um, with the multimedia, we have a possibility to uh, uh, expand uh, in great uh, the medal of the coin and with a ludic uh, aspect. For your, um, for your information, uh, most multimedia uh, in, vid in video format are available on the YouTube uh, channel of the uh, Monet Paris uh, in uh, MP4 uh, format, and you can see on the on the on the net, uh, uh, no no problem. It's uh, it's it's easy to to find the 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 device the, the multimedia of the uh, Museum of uh, Monet de Paris. Um, other um, in the museum we have a, a grid. Uh, many educational activities, both for adults and for school children. I am thinking in particular of the engraving demonstration. And you can see one of our uh, engraver uh, who uh, present, explain um, this job for the public in the museum, in the museum uh, every, uh, every week. 
uh, I'm thinking uh, also uh, of the creative workshop, uh, uh, which um, uh, which are in fact workshop where children get to grips with the gesture of artisan, such as, for example, here the decoration making workshop with real height far enameling. It's a high quality of um, uh, creative of workshop for the public and uh, a lot of success for this uh, pedagogical activity for children and for adult, uh, adult like uh, this. Even somewhat we have an exceptional operation during uh, school uh, holiday, in this case uh, the operation linking uh, linked to the story of King Midas is uh, the actuality. Uh, uh, King Midas transformed the common metal into gold. Uh, this is the Mid Midas operation we take place until the end on this year's and the Christmas holiday are some examples and you can uh, uh, make your inscription on the website on the Paris Mint. Um, it's, the museum is, is very important for children, for scholars, and for adults, we have a large spect of public. Um, each year, the permanent exhibition is regularly supplemented by focus exhibition has, uh, say, uh, Gilles, uh, on a specific point of numismatic heritage. For example, in 2018, on the occasion of the centenary of the armistice, uh, the museum organized an exhibition about uh, currency during the First World War. Uh, you can recognize here on the right the most the very most famous uh, poster uh, of Abel Fèvre with the famous Greek coin of uh, Chaplin with the Gallic symbol. Uh, another exhibition was devoted to the Akenweight. Uh, the Akenweight for to weight the gold uh, in the Gulf of Guinea. And uh, more recently, uh, I say, uh, uh, Gilles, uh, an exhibition about the history of the Olympic medal uh, from its uh, origin uh, in uh, 1896 until uh, this year in the Game of Paris. The opportunity to recall uh, that the Paris Mint was the first uh, organization in the world to strike an Olympic medal uh, and uh, uh, an occasion to, uh, to see the um, to see the creation of Roger Excoffon for the medal for the Olympic Games in Grenoble in 1968. And of course, a very good occasion to see the first medal of the history, the first medal, the Olympic medal of the history, the medal designed by Jules Clément Chaplin for the, for the Olympic Games in Athens in 1896. Uh, for your information, all the focus exhibition of the Monet de Paris are systematically digitized, digitalized, or je ne sais pas comment est-ce qu'on dit, uh, numérisés, uh, and put online on the uh, Paris, uh, Paris Monet, Marie, Monet de Paris uh, website, and you can see here, uh, you, you, are, you go on the Monet de Paris site, and you have cultural site, and you have virtual visit, and you can see again uh, the, all the exhibition of the, of the museum. Uh, the museum is also a place uh, in touch with monetary and economic uh, use. We host many events related to this area. And for example, next year, we will host the study uh, days and the Congress of the European Banking History Association in collaboration with BNP Paribas. It's a digest of the program of this uh, Congress. But neither the museum nor the temporary exhibition nor the educa educational activities would exist if there were not first the very important collection. No collection, no museum. No collection, no exhibition.
And uh, of course, the collection are in reserve, either on the Paris site, either on the Pesac site. The coin cabinet in Paris uh, houses the monetary collection, but also the token and the metrologic collection, the paper collection, so and the bibliographic and photographic collection. Some archival items are also kept in, uh, in Paris. And the Pesac site, for its part, houses all the medal, all the tool and die collection for coin, token, and medal, as well as the plaster and the machine. And you can see here an element of the Austerlitz screw press, the famous uh, screw press of Napoleon. Uh, I will have the pleasure during the next two stations to give you a, a virtual tour of this two reserve location and we'll show you some of the most remarkable uh, testimonies preserved within the collection. Also, it will be an opportunity to talk about ongoing research project, both on this fund, some of which in connection with other institutions. I'm thinking in particular about the project in preparation uh, on the subject of token. It's my uh, lover subject of research, uh, subject, uh, 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 subject uh, a project uh, about uh, studies token from the old uh, regime, so l'ancien regime with the Bibliothèque Nationale de France and in particular uh, his curator, Jean-Yves Kind. To conclude this talk because uh, it's just, uh, I have chosen uh, two um, to show you four artifacts from the collection of the Paris uh, Mint that I really uh, like. Uh, a token die with the screw press of the 18th century, the beautiful medal of Basel dedicated to the free workshop of the Paris Mint at the beginning of the 20th century, the still impressive photo of the imposing uh, Grima screw press, uh, and in homage to you, American friend, the medal untitled New York, created by the French artist, uh, Thérèse Dufresne. Uh, thank you a lot uh, for your attention. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to stop the screen share. Do we have any questions? Maybe I have a first question, um, uh, Dominique. You said that the, uh, you said, I, I trust you, um, that the, the medals for the Olympic Games uh, mixed precious metal and iron. And you said iron from the Eiffel Tower. Uh, how did you get that iron from the, the tower? What was the... Alors, j'ai compris la question. Euh, vous pourrez la traduire si ça ne vous dérange pas. Je vais faire court. En fait, euh, dans l'histoire de la tour Eiffel, beaucoup de poutres ont été retirées quand ils ont agrandi les ascenseurs. Ces so, poutres ont yeah, été... Let, 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 let me translate. So, in the history of the Eiffel Tower, um, a, a lot of supporting... Um, uh, materials were removed when the elevators were um, lifted or um, uh, modernized. So some iron was removed from the, the tower, correct? Exactement. Et, et, et ce trésor de guerre a été conservé par l'établissement public de la Tour Eiffel. Et donc, une poutre a été euh, dédiée à la monnaie de Paris pour y tailler 5090 tranches qui ont été mises sur les 5090 médailles. So there were 5090 <laughs> medals. They were produced from one of these uh, iron pillars uh, removed from the Eiffel Tower. Thank you for your congratulations. I uh, read your message. Thank you very much. Uh,
Yes, you're getting a lot of love in those comments. Do we have any my, other my 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 um um my enterprise it's a, a very nice enterprise and it's for me it's not difficult to speak about my enterprise of course i'm seeing a question online um y a-t-il beaucoup d'informations qui est disponible en ligne concernant l'histoire de l'atelier monétaire de la monnaie de paris oh, alors... Oh, oui, euh, oui. On, on en trouve, mais euh, en fait, pour l'instant, nous n'avons pas, nous, nous sommes une toute petite équipe et nous n'avons pas les moyens de mettre en ligne beaucoup d'informations. Euh, so let me translate. So, um, oui. The question was about the availability online of information regarding the history of the Monet Paris. And what Dominique is saying, it's a very small team. They don't have um, a lot of Uh, resources uh, to work on the website, so there is very little available right now um, online on that topic. But we have an uh, um, we have an OPAC web. Uh, it's um, uh, a relation between uh, our intranet and the internet about the. Um, uh, c'est un comment dire c'est une interface en fait qui existe euh, entre notre base de données des collections et internet donc une partie de nos collections euh, qui sont sur notre base de données est en ligne sur internet so what, what dominique is saying is that um, part of their own database of the intranet system is available on uh, the public website but not not everything yes Um, how many, uh, combien de, de monnaies antérieures à 1800 sont-elles sont exposées uh, dans le musée ainsi qu'en ligne Alors, Great question. Uh, antérieures à 1800, je n'ai pas fait le tri. Uh, uh, je pense que dans le musée, uh, il y a au moins un, un bon tiers de monnaies, ou même plus, plus de la moitié. La, plus de la moitié des monnaies présentées sont antérieures à 1800. So about half of all the coins and medals exhibited in the museum are pre pre 1800. But how many coins are we talking about? Is this in the hundreds, in the thousands? Euh, on, on présente 1300 objets, 1350 objets dans le musée, donc on doit avoir à peu près. Si on exclut les machines et, et autres, on doit avoir, je pense, euh, entre 300 et 400 monnaies anciennes euh, antérieures à 1800 qui sont présentées. About 400 mm. uh, coins uh, pre-1800. So, what Scott Safe was saying, I could suggest inviting Google to add this on their online library. So there may be ways to get, you know, uh, support from Google about the, um, on the website that I, I don't know about it. So, oh, and what, what Robert Ronus is asking, um, online, are you showing a lot of pre-1800 coins online? Uh, je ne saurais pas vous dire combien on en a en ligne. Il faut, il faut, en fait, il faut aller sur le site de la monnaie vous vous connectez en fait à l'OPAC web hein, qui est marqué collection du collection patrimoniale et, et ensuite vous avez des filtres et vous pouvez activer vos fi les filtres en fonction de vos recherches. So you go to Monet Paris, the main website. Oui, je vais essayer de le faire moi-même. I'm seeing boutique en ligne, lieu culturel, l'institution. Alors attendez. And there is an English vous... version. You can, you can yes, 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 yes. Je ne peux plus vraiment sortir de mon. Je ne peux plus sortir de mon diaporama. Bon, euh, bah je suis coincé. Je voulais, euh, sinon je vous l'aurais partagé. Ah oui, mais c'est. Yeah, I'm seeing online cult uh, cultural site institution. Should I click on institution? Non, vous normalement sur cultural site. Cultural et site. Vous, okay. Et vous devez avoir euh, un en descendant. 
euh, la possibilité d'accéder à nos collections. Il doit y avoir marqué nos collections en ligne ou quelque chose comme ça. Je, je suis coincé, mon écran est bloqué. En fait, je ne peux pas, je peux pas en fait vous, je vois pas en fait. Je, je ne peux pas vous aider. Ah oh, yes, you, your your collection. Okay, I'm going to share the link now on. Um, yeah, found it. Okay, thank you, Gilles. I'm just sharing this. Sorry, paste. Okay, that's the link to the to the collection. Um, so this is a comment uh, from George uh, Courre uh, saying you, you must have a, a, a very good um, <laughs> a memory of everything because the, the trays are not labeled. Il n'y a pas d'étiquette sur les, sur les tiroirs derrière vous. Donc vous savez non. où tu se trouve. <rire> oui, bien vu. <rire> en effet, je suis, j'ai normalement ça dans ma, à peu près dans ma tête. Okay, so yeah, uh, the, the reply is that he knows everything by heart. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, c'est pour dissuader le, un médaillé est une arme de dissuasion massive pour le voleur. Quand il arrive, il doit être découragé. Yeah, it's, it's an on, uh, it's an anti theft um, <laughs> uh, scheme. So uh, thieves will not yes. find what to steal because there are no labels and uh, <laughs> nothing is indicated. There is an, an, another message on the chat from Chester Sullivan, uh, qui vous remercie pour les les uh, les Castorland, les jetons du Castorland. Ah yes, okay. And ah, uh, I founded the die of the token. I founded the die of the token in Pesach site, and I will go to um, make a photo for you. Yeah, I'm seeing uh, Ch uh, Chester is sharing um, the image on uh, on screen. I, I, I don't know if, if everyone is familiar. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Ah, I invited. It's okay. Uh, I don't. I forget to. Uh, I have invited uh, the the photo. Yes, it's uh, it's good. Uh, perfect. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Ah uh, yes, it, it, it was. Enfin, ces jetons, ces matrices, Gilles, si vous pouvez traduire, ces deux matrices de jetons n'étaient absolument pas avec les outillages de jetons. Ils étaient complètement sur un autre plateau. Voilà. Donc, il n'y avait aucune chance qu'on les trouve si ce n'est par hasard. Yeah, what he's saying is that the, the, um, the, the equipment was not stored where, where it was supposed to be, so they were found by by chance. Uh, I don't know if everyone knows, is familiar with a Castorland story. It's a, it's a late 18th century scheme um, where, I mean, because of the French Revolution, a lot of wealthy and aristocrats yes. left France. And a scheme, a kind of Ponzi scheme, was set up to attract some of their money by telling them, oh, there's great land upstate New York. Um, you're going to have a great life, so buy this land. So these people bought land. Uh, some of them went there and didn't survive the first winter. Uh, upstate New York in, se in the 1790s was, was no fun. Um, so it was an, a, a big disaster. Um, <laughs> yeah. But there were okay. some medals and chetons um, struck for, for Castorland. <laughs> hey, Castorland. <laughs> So, um, Scott Safe saying, um, les reproductions des médailles des États-Unis, des, uh, des, des anciennes médailles des États-Unis sont très, uh, sont très, uh, très réussies. Um, ça serait bien de voir plus de reproductions d'anciennes médailles. Ah, euh, à mais, ah, de les voir au musée. In, um, uh, Scott, in the museum or online? Online. Online. online uh, well, but also reproduced uh, that people can purchase from the Mint. Uh, okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, I, I note. I note. But um, yes, the problem is um, we we have a, a very little team. Uh, for um, the collection, uh, we are three three person, uh, three creator, uh, and register. 
for the collection. And uh, we have a lot of activity. You have seen a lot of activity in the Paris site of the Monet de Paris. And it's difficult to work uh, in one direction during uh, uh, a lot of days about an, a subject. And of, uh, for example, uh, the, the mise en line of the, of the collection. But uh, yes, I, I note your, your, your question. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, if we don't have any other questions, I guess we could wrap it up. I have say one more if it's okay. Yes, please. Uh, I was curious on the images, all of the, co the coins and medals that you have in the cabinet um, are loose. And I was wondering if you were actually going to look to like, you know, protect those, encapsulate them or, you know, protect those over time. Alors, il y avait une question sur la conservation des médailles, c'est ça Oui, qu'elles ne sont, sont pas encapsulées, que les médailles que vous montrez ou les pièces que vous montrez semblent ne pas être encapsulées et, et donc la question de leur, de leur protection, si ça va changer dans le futur Non, alors pour l'instant, euh, non. Alors, on, a des, on, on met en capsule certaines, euh, certaines monnaies, euh, toutes, les monnaies issues, toutes les monnaies neuves issues du dépôt légal donc de nos ateliers sont toutes en capsule. Uh, toutes les collections anciennes ne le sont pas. So voilà. the, the, the new uh, the, the newest the new production from the mint are en encapsulated but not not the older productions. I guess the question was whether or not you, you have a program to protect the, the older ones at some point. Ah, non, on, on ne mettra pas en capsule, uh, il y a aussi une question um, de soutenabilité écologique sur les matériaux plastiques. Donc aujourd'hui, on est en train de revenir là-dessus. Donc on ne fera pas, je pense, sauf à avoir des plastiques biosourcés, on ne fera pas de mise en capsule des monnaies de la collection. En revanche, on travaille sur l'atmosphère du cabinet qui est derrière moi. So the focus of the Monet de Paris is to work on uh, the quality, the air quality, so um, uh, controlling humidity and temp temperature. They're not planning to use plastic because it's an unsustainable, uh, it's ecologically unsustainable uh, uh, material. So it's not something they wish to use uh, to to preserve uh, ancient coins. Yeah, that was part of my question too. So thank you. Appreciate the answer. Uh, uh, this has been a very interesting presentation. Um, I would love to see our speaker back uh with a second presentation uh, uh of the uh most unusual and most interesting coins in, in the collection uh we saw some of the medals uh we saw very little of the coins and uh, this great collection i'm sure there's some fascinating things there vous avez compris la demande euh, euh, alors, euh, je préfère que vous me traduisiez. <rire> Donc, pour, la, la prochaine, pour une prochaine présentation, euh, avoir des objets, euh, des, 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 des monnaies anciennes euh, de la collection qui soient euh, présentées. Euh, et, et ce sera le, ce sera le, c'est le thème de la deuxième partie, donc euh, dans un mois où là on parlera à la fois donc de la collection de, de monnaies et de la collection de jetons, la collection métrologique aussi qui est très intéressante. Et sur la troisième euh, partie, euh, ce seront les, les médailles et les objets d'art qui seront euh, qui seront présentés, soit par moi, soit par ma collègue. Mais là, on était vraiment dans le contexte pour que les gens comprennent que la monnaie de Paris, c'est pas juste voilà, une production de monnaie et un, et un vieux musée. So in a, in a month's time, uh, the, there will be three uh, presentations in total uh, by Dominique and, and one of his colleagues. Uh, the, next, the, the next one in a month uh, will focus on uh, ancient coins and jetons. And that will be on December 6th. Uh, I, I should have guessed that somebody else would have thought this before me. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much to you and uh, for your comprehension about my uh, my English. <laughs> your English is really very good. Um, <laughs> no, 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 Emma. I'm just flattering no. you. <laughs> I wish I could speak uh, French like he speaks English. Exactly. Mais c'était très bien, très bien. <laughs> bravo, très bravo pour le français. Très intéressant, très, très Merci. intéressant. Merci. Merci, Merci à vous. <laughs>